What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. I am the Novice Racer and welcome to my review of the Track Racer TR80 Mark V, which I'm currently sitting in. To make this video more interesting, I'm going to be reviewing this whilst I do the MX-5 Global Cup at Alton Park. We're about to get into 8 minutes of qualifying and then an 8 lap race. But let's start off with an overview. The Track Racer TR80 Mark V is an entry to mid-level sim racing rig. It's an aluminium construction and it retails for 799 Australian dollars, which works out to be about 530 USD or 420 Great British Pounds. I got mine with a couple of accessories in which I'll get into, but all of them I think are absolutely necessary for comfort. Jumping into our outlap of qualifying, let's start off with the uh, build quality uh, shipping and build process. So in terms of shipping, um, everything was okay. Nothing came in uh, out of the box broken or damaged or scratched, which was great. There did seem to be an excess amount of packaging. I thought there was some places where maybe you could have, I don't know, squeezed some more bits into the same boxes. And a couple of things were wrapped in a very hard plastic instead of, to, to protect from scratching instead of something um, softer and more uh, uh, conventional and it was really difficult to get off so that is quite annoying but apart from that everything seemed okay warm up these front tires a little bit and now the rears okay and into our first time lap all right so i should point out at this point that i did not pick up a track racer seat i found this uh sas seat uh, for SAAS, not sure how to pronounce it, but it was uh, a lot cheaper than what I could get. It was on sale, 269 Australian dollars. Um, the Track Racer one start at 448. So I picked up that instead, so I can't provide a review of any of the Track Racer options in terms of seats. Oh, and into the hairpin. Bit, ooh, bit twitchy, but we managed to hold it nicely. Now onto the build process. Now, this is where I have a little bit of a gripe. Look, I'm, I'm not uh, an expert or by any means in building things. I'm not a handyman at all, but you know, I'm reasonably practical. I can build Ikea furniture. I'm not, a, I'm not completely inept, um, but this took a ridiculously long time. Uh, it took me seven hours from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. to, to assemble. Look, again, I don't know if it's just me, but I think, you know, I'm sure you can get it done quicker than that. If you're uh, better at building things than I am, if you're a bit of a, a tradie or a handyman, but, you know, maybe down to four or five hours or something. But I think I did, you know, as good as any sort of average person would do and seven hours was ridiculously long. The instructions, so they're only available online, which I actually kind of like, you know, save the environment and all that. You can look on your computer screen. That's not a problem for me, particularly, maybe for you. Um, but just other things like uh, they had pictures, if not particularly detailed ones, um, there weren't multiple angles for anything. So sometimes you did have to, you know, go back and double check that everything you were doing is right. And the one thing that I found really annoying is that none of the bags were labeled. All the nuts and bolts came in different bags relating to which part of the rig they were from, which is great. Um, but once you took them out of there, they weren't labeled and none of the screw sizes were labeled or anything. So when the instructions asked for a specific size screw, you had to kind of just guess or um, obviously you can measure if you, uh, if you want, but you need to kind of know what you're doing and know what you're looking for in that sense and that kind of confused me a little bit in, in building. What a qualifying lap, 154.8, that is a very nice lap I'll have you know. Okay not quite on pole position but not too bad we're uh, at 1.1 seconds off pole that's a really good lap there from John Wright but I think overall in terms of grid we're probably not going to get pushed too far down from there. Something that you will have found said in all of the reviews online for any track race products is that the anodized black aluminium frame is very susceptible to scratching. To be honest, this doesn't really bother me too much. I'm not in it for the aesthetics, I'm in it for the functionality. All the scratching happens on the inside of the metal or something where you're putting nuts and bolts in where you're probably not gonna see it. But if aesthetics is very big for you, 
this could be something to, to know about at least. As always, we want to try and keep this clean. I know it is difficult in the MX-5 class. They're, it's not always the cleanest race, but try our best. Particularly the first corner, particularly this first corner, down to that banked left-hander and then up to the hairpin. That's, our, I think, our most important area of this race. Lights are on. Green, here we go. All right, we got a decent start. Cover off on third place here, hit heading in behind the leader. Oh, 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 shiter. Oh, everyone's gone past. Oh, it's a terrible, terrible start for us. One car's had it worse. Oh, God, we need repairs. This is where I thought we might get damaged. Oh, no. We're going to have to pit for repairs. Terrible start for the race. So while we wait for the tow truck, I'll tell you a little bit more. The T-nuts that you get with this, I thought they would be exactly shaped to the inside of the aluminium frame so that you could slot it down and then just screw the bolts in. Annoyingly, they're kind of rounded off at the edges, so they, they do fit in well, and you that, that is the idea. You screw the nut into them. But they're very easily rotating on the inside of the frame, which means sometimes that'll make it difficult to, if you loosen the bolt again, to move items forward or backwards or up and down because the T-nut will have rotated on the inside of the metal frame and will be dragging against it. And I found that particularly annoying because you have to make a lot of adjustments with this. If, like me, you've never had an aluminium frame rig before, then it's going to take a lot of getting used to. I've taken at least two days to find my seat position properly, forwards and backwards tilt, steering wheel forwards and back, and pedals forward and backwards. I think it's actually only right now that I've made my final pedal adjustment that I've stopped getting pain in my lower back and that I've found a really comfortable position that I can keep racing in. And because you're gonna be making these adjustments all the time, it's really annoying that a lot of the framing will get dragged on one side by these T-nuts that are inside the aluminium frame, stopping the, the parts from moving around. And if you're planning on making adjustments like this all the time for some reason, there's so many bolts. Just to move the steering wheel forward or backwards, there's eight bolts that you have to undo and then redo just to move it an inch, which, you know, in the first few days can get really annoying. All right, finally out of the pits. I guess let's just keep the rest of this race smooth. Now, of course, you're not going to be making small adjustments like this all the time. And I think now that I've found a good seating position for myself, I probably won't have to adjust this at all unless I get some new gear, which is which is great. But for the first few days, at least, it's extremely annoying how many bolts you have to undo and do up again. Now, of course, getting onto build quality, that is obviously one thing that benefits from all these bolts because the rig is... Oops. Well, that's embarrassing. It's literally, I've got to wait another two minutes to tow. It's literally not even worth doing this race anymore. I'm just going to forfeit it. And it's not worth going to film the rest of this review again. So I'm just going to leave that in. As I was saying, all the bolts in this do make it great build quality. Uh, there's literally no flex in any of the material here. All the frame, the pedal plate, the steering wheel column, and the, the wheel mount, perfect. Seat frame, Amazing. Brackets, good. Nothing has any flex in it at all. It's so solid. It's so stiff. It's not going anywhere. Really good. All right, let's get into practice for our second race. Maybe we can do a bit better in this one. And that being said, I have to mention the accessories I got, which I think without, I wouldn't be enjoying this rig quite as much. Now, the first one, which may not apply to everybody, but definitely applies to me, is the caster wheels. Now, this rig, because it's so strong and so sturdy, it's very heavy. Even being aluminium, look, you could move it around by yourself, but it would just be a hassle every time. If you have a dedicated space, then great. Maybe this isn't something you need, but for me, this is going where my desk chair usually goes, just at my desk. Um, and if you're in a shared space, like a living room or even just anywhere that, that uh, someone else might want to be, then the caster wheels are almost necessary for you. It would be impossible to move this every single day and not get extremely frustrated and wanting to commit on a life. They're pretty good, they're not that expensive, and they just bolt to the side of the rig, so that's perfect. The second accessory are the cable ties. 
Again, you could live without these, but I just don't see why you would want to. They're 10 bucks, they're so cheap, and they slide into the aluminium rig frame on the side. They come with cable ties, and you slot it through. All the cables are nicely routed through down the chassis, onto the pedal plate, and uh, through the USB hub. Amazing. And the final accessory is the cup holder. You don't need this one, but it's not exactly easy to get up and get out and reach things. So just having a drink beside me, which I, I enjoy, especially if I'm doing a couple hours at a time. Perfect. Just makes the rig so much more comfortable. There are a couple of accessories that uh, Track Racer sell that I didn't get, and I wish I did. The first one is the keyboard mount because I find I still have to get up out of my seat to reach the keyboard. Not that I need it during a race, but between sessions, it would be good. And then of course, the mouse pad mount as well. If I could just have these on either side of my rig, they swing in and out, it would be amazing. I wouldn't need to get out to get on my peripherals all the time. That's probably something that I'll add in the future. They're not that expensive either. And it would just add to the comfort of the of the rig and the practicality of everything. I wouldn't have to have my keyboard and mouse so far out of the way. Now my previous rig was the Next Level GT Lite. Uh, it's a very, very inexpensive rig uh, compar in comparison to others. It's an entry level foldable rig. Um, and look, it's it does what it says on the, on the tin. It's a seat, it's better than sitting at your desk. In your, in, in your office chair, it's got a space for your wheel and pedals, and it folds away so you can save space, which is exactly what I needed. But other than that, it's pretty rubbish. It's uncomfortable, especially in long sessions. My ass would get numb all the time. Uh, I ended up not having to fold it out of the way that often, which is just applicable to me. You may need to fold yours out of the way, so it may be useful to you, but it didn't apply to me really. And there is so much flex and movement, it's better than sitting at your desk and clamping the wheel, but only just. Only because you don't have to move your wheel and pedals every time. You can just have the one rig. If you're in one of those and you're considering moving up to this Track Racer TR80 Mark V, would I recommend it? One million percent. It is, the jump from there to here is astronomical. It's crazy. Um, you will definitely notice the comfort and the performance of having all your wheel and pedals nice and steady and in a comfortable racing position every time. As I said as well, for my specific circumstances, I didn't need to fold mine up uh, that often as much as I thought I would. And this rig isn't that big. It fits into the space vacated by my office chair when I'm not using it. And so I can kind of just shove it off to the side and still be okay. So if you have a dedicated sim racing space or you have a little bit of spare space where you can store this rig, I would definitely recommend it. If you're someone that is looking for their first rig on the market, it, it really depends what you're looking for. From my personal experience, I wouldn't recommend going with the foldable rig unless you absolutely have to. It was a good stopgap for me between, you know, not having a wheel or pedals set up at all to then getting to this rig. But in hindsight, I wish I had have skipped to that stage and just saved up the extra money and gone for this rig in the first place. It is, you know, it is double the price, but it's more than double the experience, I, I would say. It's a standard aluminium T-frame setup, so you have upgrades available not just from Track Racer, but from all sorts of different companies. It wasn't the easiest build, but then again, I can imagine comparable products are probably the same because they're all made of the same generic aluminium framing. And I got a couple of great cheap accessories, which I really recommend as well. It won't put the price up too much, but it will make your comfort uh, in your sim rig so much higher. If by any chance you did want to know about the seat, it's okay. I've never had a bucket seat before, so I can't speak uh, on, against any others or against a track racer equivalent, if you're thinking of one of those. But again, for $269 compared to $450, I can't imagine how much better track racers could be. Um, I'm guessing, I guess if you went a lot higher up the price point, then of course you could get higher comfort and more customized to your particular body shape. But for an entry level seat for a very cheap price in comparison, I'm pretty happy with it. It looks okay, it fits the rig fine, 
and it's much more comfortable than the alternative that I used to have or sitting in an office chair. All right, I hope you did enjoy this review of the Track Racer TR80 Mark V. It's just a shame that my racing throughout was pretty tragic. Uh, that definitely doesn't speak to the product, that speaks to me and I'm gonna work on that. So if you did enjoy everything you saw here today, please hit subscribe, comment down below, anything you wanna see me do next. Is there any products you'd like to see me review or do you just wanna go back to normal sim racing content? If you did enjoy, please give it a big thumbs up and I'll see you next time.